of Egypt to talk to you. He is a renowned scholar throughout the Islamic world. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Amma ba'd Ma'adi Sayyid Rais al-Jami'a Sada Al-Umada Sada أضاء هي تدريس في هذه الجامعة العريقة أبنائنا الطلاب والطالبات أحييكم جميعا في تحية الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful praise be to Allah the almighty and prayers and blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Dear Your Excellency, the Vice Chancellor of this great university, uh, deans, uh, professors, and my dear students, I greet you with the greeting of Islam, which is peace. So peace be upon all of you. في بداية هذه الكلمة التي أتشرف بإلقائها في هذه الجامعة العريقة أود أن أعرب عن تقديري وأحترامي لهذه الدعوة الكريمة لكي أزور هذه الجامعة التي أسسها السيد أحمد خان في نهايات القرن التاسع عشر وبداية القرن العشرين والحقيقة هذه السيرة العطرة للسيد أحمد خان تجعلني جميعا في أمل وفي عمل في عمل مستمر متصل بهذا الأمل الذي يحمله الإنسان المسلم لكي تستمر الحياة ولكي يستمر العطاء الإنساني في جوانب هذه الجامعة الكريمة Allow me in the beginning to express my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to this great university and uh, the opportunity to be with you uh, this afternoon to say a few words. So thank you uh, again for allowing me to be with you and I graciously accept the invitation that you give me uh, to uh, say a few words and let me express also my uh, heartfelt honor and privilege to be in this great university founded by a great uh, visionist uh, Sir uh, Sayyid Ahmad Khan who founded this great university at the uh, closing of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th uh, century, uh, this uh, great university which still stands uh, today. وفي بداية هذه الكلمة أود أن أؤكد على أن ديننا الحنيف الإسلام هو نسخ عالمي مفتوح لم يسعى أبدا إلى إقامة الحواجز بين المسلمين وبين غيرهم وإنما دعا المسلمين إلى ضرورة بناء الجسور بينهم وبين الآخرين وبقلوب مفتوحة وعلى جميع الأصعيدة In the beginning I would like to share with you that our faith, Islam is an open paradigm, an open model that seeks to engage people and does not erect barriers between people. Rather, Islam calls us Muslims to always engage and build bridges of understanding and cooperation among different sectors of people. 
من هذا المنطلق لا شك أنه بتواصله الكامل منذ أن جاء سيدنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى امتدادا إلى تاريخ الأمة الشريف فإن الإسلام أقام حضارة إنسانية أخلاقية وسعت كل الفلسفات وكل الملل وكل الحضارات حيث إن الإسلام يمثل انفتاحا على هذه الحضارات ويمثل أيضا إفادة واستفادة على مر التاريخ ولذلك نحن كمسلمين استطعنا أن نستوعب كل الحضارات وفي كل بلد مر به المسلمون وفي كل بلد عاش فيه المسلمون استطاعوا بفعل أن يمدوا أيديهم إلى الآخرين وأن يستفيدوا وأن يفيدوا الآخرين. So from the time that our beloved Prophet peace be upon him was commissioned as a prophet, as the last prophet until right now uh, the modern day of Islam and throughout the history of Islam and Muslims. Islam engaged very effectively with other world philosophies, world civilizations, and embraced all philosophies and all civilizations, and benefited from uh, all philosophies and all civilizations, and added to them, and benefited from them. So this has been the way of life of Muslims throughout history that they embraced all peoples, they embraced all civilizations, and they embraced all ways of philosophy. The truth is that I would like to say that Islam, when we read the Quran and the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah, we will see that he has given us قواعد التعايش بين المسلم وبين غيره ويمكن أن نستفيد من مسلك سيدنا الرسول الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم منذ أن كان في مكة المكرمة إلى أن انتقل إلى الرفيق الأعلى مرورا بأنه أرسل المسلمين إلى الحبشة وكان أهل الحبشة من المسيحيين ثم إن المسلمين أيضا تعايشوا مع مشركي مكة ثم إنهم بعد أن انتقلوا إلى المدينة المنورة تعايشوا وعاشوا مع اليهود وعبدة الأوثان مما مما يمكن أن نقول بارتياح شديد جدا أن المسلم المعاصر يمكن أن يقتفي أثر هذه السيرة العاصرة وأن يتفاعل مع كل المجتمعات وأن يفيد كل المجتمعات ب منطقه السليم وبقلبه النقي السليم وبفكره الرشيد. If we look closely at the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, from the time he was commissioned as a prophet until he passed away at the age of 63. We can find that uh, through his example and through also the uh, text of the Quran, we find a clear constitution for certain principles that manage the dealings of a Muslim with a non-Muslim. So if we look closely at his example when he was in Mecca, he engaged with, with his community, even though they were non-Muslims. And then he sent a, a group of his companions to Abyssinia. At that time, it was predominantly a Christian country. So they went over there and they engaged with the people over there. And then when he later migrated to Medina, he came up with a great idea of 
something called the Constitution of Medina in which he sets and principles about how to deal and how to engage with other people, Christians and Jews and pagans and non-Muslims at that time. So his life and throughout his example, which is a model for us Muslims, we need to engage, we need to cooperate, we need to set examples of fruitful bridge building between us and the rest of the people. ولهذا يؤكد دائما على انه ينبغي علينا في وقتنا الحاضر وفي كل الاوقات ان نبحث عن القواسم المشتركه بين الرسالات السماويه التي تعيننا ان نلتقي وان نتحاور وان نتعايش معا في سلام وفي وئام وهذا ما وجدناه في النصوص الشريفه في القران الكريم وفي سنه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولعل من ابرز ما جاء في القران الكريم في قول الله سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الناس ان خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم فالتعارف هو هدف نبيل وهدف يحقق اللقاء فيما بين ابناء المجتمع البحر. The first starting point as we understand from the Quran and also from the example of our beloved Prophet is that we need to search for common grounds between us and other uh, people in order to find some sort of common ground for cooperation and for collaboration. And this understanding we find many verses in the Quran and many prophetic statements to urge us Muslims that we need to seek always common word and common ground between us and the rest of the people. I uh, will refer you to the verse uh, in Surah Al-Hujurat. Uh, verse number 13 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the translation O people we have created you from male and female and made you into tribes and nations so that you get to know each other verily the most honorable among you is the one who is God conscious so in this verse God stated that the purpose for which Allah created us is that we get to know each other, to be acquainted with each other. So this is the purpose of creation. The purpose of creation not to kill each other or not to hate each other. The purpose of creation is that we get to know each other. This is the purpose that we need to grasp and understand. Uh, فأنا أختلف عن أخي وأختلف عنك وفي عالم الطيور نجد اختلافا كبيرا وتنوعا لا حصر له في عالم الأشجار والنباتات والفاكهة في عالم الجبال كل هذه المخلوقات خلقها الله سبحانه وتعالى في تنوع بديع يدل على قدرته سبحانه وتعالى إذا نظرنا إلى هذا التنوع يمكن أن نقول بأن التنوع هو قضية حتمية في الكون قضية حتمية بين المخلوقات ومن ثم لا يتصور أن يكون الناس على عقيدة واحدة ولذلك القرآن الكريم يقول لنا ولو شاء ربك لجعل الناس أمة واحدة ويقول أيضا سبحانه وتعالى ولو شاء ربك 
لآمن من في الأرض كلهم جميعا أفأنت تكره الناس حتى يكونوا مؤمنين هذه الحقيقة حقيقة التنوع تدعونا إلى أن نضع أنفسنا الموضع الصحيح في هذه الأرض لأننا دعينا إلى السلام وإلى الرحمة وإلى التعاطف والتعاون مع كل المخلوقات وليس الإنسان فقط This is not to mean uh, that differences do not exist. Differences do exist. Even uh, the uh, honorable attendees in this great hall, we have differences. Difference, differences in color, differences in the way we think. And this diver diversity and differences are one of the divine laws. Allah created us differently and He created all of the things that exist around us in different formats. So the birds are different, the trees are different. So we find each and everything in this universe were created in a particular format. This diversity is not a way to create clashes and conflicts. Rather, this diversity is seen in the Quran as a divine gift, a divine blessing. And this is the purpose for which Allah created us differently. And this aspect has been emphasized throughout the Quran that if God wills, He could have created all people in the same way, the same format, the same color, the same language, the same religion. But God is the all-wise. He created everybody differently. What we have to accept is that we have to accept our differences. We have to accept our diversity. But at the same time, that we need to cooperate with other people because we cannot live alone. We cannot live without everybody else. We should supplement and complement each other. We have to bridge these differences into a step of practical cooperation and collaboration for the sake of ourselves and for the sake of humanity. من هذا من هذا التقديم الذي سبق نستطيع ان نقول اننا نحتاج الى ان نتمسك بالقيم وان نتمسك بالمسل العليا ان نتمسك بالرحمه لان سيدنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اخبر عنه ربه عز وجل بانه ارسل رحمه للعالمين وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين وهو صلى الله عليه وسلم قال عن نفسه انما انا رحمه مهداه فكان رحيما ورؤوفا بكل الخلق ولذلك نحن نحتاج الى ان نستعيد هذه القيم في وجداننا وفي سلوكنا وفي علاقاتنا المتعدده حتى في العلاقات بين الانسان واخيه الانسان في داخل البيت الواحد في داخل الاسره الصغيره الزوج والزوجة الأب والأبناء نحتاج أيضا أن نعمق قيم الرحمة فيما بين المخلوقات جميعا بين الإنسان وأخيه الإنسان في الجوار بين أهل القرية الواحدة بين أهل المدينة الواحدة إلى آخره لأن الإنسان يذكر هذه المفردة مفردة الرحمة أكثر من مئة مرة في اليوم الواحد ولذلك هو يحتاج إلى أن يكون هذا القول الذي يقوله الرحمن الرحيم يحتاج إلى أن يكون سلوكا ممارسا في واقعه العمل في علاقاته المتعدد. When we engage with other people, it doesn't mean that we, the differences among our religions will be watered down. No. When we engage with other people as Muslims, we need to stick to our principles and our values. 
and the predominant value that we need to stick to is the value of compassion and the value of mercy. Our beloved Prophet defined himself as the epitome or the gift of mercy and compassion, not only for Muslims, but for the entire humanity. His life example was an expression and token of compassion and mercy. And he distributes, he distributed his mercy and compassion, not only to his family and wives, but to all creations. He was a gift of mercy to birds, to animals, to even plants, to inanimate things. So he was a gift of mercy to the entire creation. As Muslims, we take him as a model. So each and every movement of our life as Muslims has to be translated into an action and token of mercy yeah. and compassion. Yeah. This is the mission statement of Muslims. Wherever they happen to be, if between husband and wife, between a father or mother to her children, between children to their parents, between a man to man, regardless of his ethnic or linguistic or religious background, the overriding quality of human beings is that they should be translations of compassion and mercy. هناك بعض المجموعات تريد أن تأخذنا بعيدا عن هذه المنطقة التي تمثل سلاما مجتمعيا وأمنا فكريا أن تأخذنا بعيدا إلى منطقة صراع ومنطقة حرب نحن نريد أن نواجه هذه الأفكار الأفكار المنحرفة نواجهها جميعا بمسؤولية مشتركة فيما بيننا جميعا نحن كعلماء الأمة نحن كرجال إعلام نحن كجامعات في شتى بقاع الأرض وخاصة في هذه الجامعات العريقة نحن نريد أن نحمي المسؤولية المشتركة التي أخبر عنها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديثه الشريف والذي هو حديث السفينة الذي يمثل العلاقات المتعددة في داخل هذه السفينة والتي تحدد المسؤوليات لكل موقع من المواقع في داخلها فإذا لم تطبق المسؤولية تطبيقا صحيحا فإننا بلا شك نكون على حافة الانهيار ونكون أمام الصراع لا يجدي نحن أمة سلام نحن أمة دعوة أمة هداية Unfortunately, there are groups of people, uh, self-acclaimed uh, Muslims and self-acclaimed scholars, who define Islam in a different perspective, in a different way, in a crooked understanding. Their sick minds and ill hearts take us to a different way of life, a different system that is full of clashes, full of violence, and full of conflicts. We have to be very careful following these people because they do not define Islam in a way that is legitimate and authentic they do not understand the Qur'an in a way that our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us and our beloved companions have transmitted to us generation after generation. We have to be really careful of following such people because they take us to a crooked understanding of the faith to a world full of conflicts and clashes. We have 
shared the responsibility to take Islam back from such people because such people have hijacked Islam. We have to claim Islam back from them. The Islam that we know, the Islam that seeks to build bridges of understanding, the Islam that seeks to build peace in society and peace in global community. We share a responsibility as our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us in the prophetic hadith, which is known as the hadith of the ship, hadith of the ship. And let me just explain to you a little bit uh, about this hadith. Because the, the Prophet said that our example, the example of humanity and Muslims, are the ones who happen to be in one ship. Some people made it to the upper deck and some people made it to the lower deck. When people from the lower deck, when they want water, they had to climb up to the upper deck to get water. So they thought that we should not disturb people in the upper deck, so let us dig a hole from our share in the lower deck so we can get access to water directly. The Prophet said, if they let them do what they want to do, they will drown and everybody in the ship will drown. If they stop them from creating havoc and wrecking the ship, everybody will be saved. So there is a shared responsibility. We are in one ship. We have to protect each other. We have to be aware of the dangers and risks that unfortunately some of us want to do harm. They think that they will do harm to only a few people, but if they do harm and we let them do the harm, everybody will drown. So there is a shared responsibility that we need to be protective of each other. We need to watch out for ourselves. We need to engage and build bridges with others so that everybody will reach the shore of safety and security, which is peace building in our modern world. في نهاية كلمتي أدعو الله سبحانه وتعالى أن ينعم على هذه الجامعة بالتقدم والرقي والاستقرار وأن يكون البحث العلمي وأن يكون طلبة العلم في هذه الجامعة العريقة من خيرة أبنائنا الذين ينشرون العلم وينشرون النور المحمدي إلى العالمين وفقكم الله سبحانه وتعالى وأكد أيضا مرة أخرى شكري وتقديري لهذه الدعوة الكريمة لزيارة هذه الجامعة شكرا لكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In the closing, uh, let me reiterate again uh, my wishes and my prayers that this great university be a lantern, a light for uh, people, an epitome of compassion of Islam, and that this university reaches the ranks of excellence through hard work and through distinguished research and unique research that benefits humanity and that each and every one in this university be an ambassador of peace and bridge building. Let me again reiterate my thanks and appreciation and gratitude for this honorable invitation which I gladly accepted to be among you, among this great uh, faculty and students and friends 
and in this great historic university a, a light for the entire world. So thank you so much and peace be with you.